Good morning, Facebook. Hey, I'm Missy Bowson, owner of Missy Bowson Fitness. Um, I just am popping on for just a few minutes before my next group of clients gets here because I just finished doing a little live stream in my one of my Facebook groups is specifically for our Spartan athletes. Um, we are about to do a Spartan race in three weeks. So this is over in Montana. And this is our kind of like our bulk, like our peak week. So I was over there and I, what I was talking to them about, I thought, you know what? A lot of people need to hear this, so I'm gonna share it with you. Super simple, super quick. But what I told the girls is like at this point, we've been training for this for now, we have three weeks to go, we've been training for at least six weeks. Now, we started a lot of our gals uh, early, like in January, working on some things and kind of slowly building up. But the technical, the um, official Spartan training started about six weeks ago. Um, and we are so far, we are seeing the, this group of ladies, we have 20 ladies going, and this group of ladies is so far ahead of any group we've ever run through. I think our, it's my dog, um, our training is getting more refined and um, the, the, the vibe is getting awesome. But what I do, this is for you. <laughs> what I am finding is that we still, and this is normal, but um, we still have people that are like really concerned about what they can't do because you know, it's scary. They haven't done anything like this before. I highly recommend for you, you do something you've never done before um, or do pick a, an event or something that's that's out there. My husband last night, he's doing all three races with me and he uh, was like, you know, it was after work, we'd already eaten, he had to go for a run and he was kind of like, if I don't do it now, you know, he's looking ahead at his schedule and he probably wouldn't have gone for it. What did he go like six and a half or something like that? Now my husband is not a distance runner. So it's kind of amazing that he's doing this and it's kind of cool because he has to do this. He's got this event set out there. He's doing, going to be doing a 13 miler, um, a five miler and a three miler race. Um, of that weekend. And so he's got this benchmark. He's got this thing out there. He's got to shoot for it lest he die. <laughs> so so um, that's number one is I want you to choose something that seems a little hard and it seems a little scary. Make sure that you know how to train for it. Um, maybe, maybe hike like Scotchman, something like that. Get yourself an event, set your bar high, and that will definitely help motivate you. I get this question a lot. How do I keep myself motivated? That will definitely motivate you to do the work, the physical work, right? But the other thing I wanted to talk to you about is that uh, what, what we find is that a lot of times our ladies will be talking about what they can't do. There's like 20 obstacles in this event that we're doing. And um, there's a lot of skill that comes to this, a lot of grip, there's a lot of strength, there's like a spear throw, who throws a spear? So it's something we all have to practice, right? But what I find is they, a lot of them could do like, uh, out of those 20 obstacles, I'd say we have about 14, like, uh, um, somebody is being very naughty. Yeah, you should get down now, get down, get down, good girl. Um, <laughs> you should be, uh, so we have about 14 of these actually at our gym that they can basically do the, the live obstacle. <clears throat> um, and um, they are accomplishing so many of them, yet there might be a few out of these 14 that they they can't do. And they focus, sometimes they get focused on the things they can't do. So what I really wanted just to share with you is that concept of don't focus on what you can't do. Keep plucking away at it, all, by all means. Pluck away at it, learn how to get it done. Let's take a pull up for example. Everybody who says, I've never been able to do a pull up. I hear this all the time. I wanna be able to do a pull up. Nobody just jumps up, I mean, Maybe someone does, but typically <laughs> women our age don't just jump up at a bar and, you know, do a pull up one day. It's a, there's a lot of little steps that lead to that pull up. There's grip strength, there's uh, scapular strength, uh, there's shoulder stability going on in there. There's pulling strength. There's all kinds of things that go into doing a pull up. So if you're going to, um, you know, if there's something you're going to be plucking away at it, just make sure you understand how to accomplish that little mission you have. But the point in not focusing on what you can't do, whether it's, I can't lose weight. I can't do a pull up. I can't, um, do hike mechanic. I can't, you know, I can't do these things. When you focus on what you can't do, that's what your brain believes. Your brain believes what you tell it. Um, we want to, it's like going out into your backyard and trying to, you know, shoot a bone arrow into a target, but you look this way. You know, as soon as you look away from that target, your arm's going to go off to the side. There is no way you're going to hit that target. Be very lucky if you did. So I want you to think about focusing on what you can do and plucking away at the things that you have not yet been able to accomplish. Because when you put the word can't on it, 
it kind of is like putting the lid on the jar. You're kind of like can't done, right? When you focus on it from a perspective of something you have not yet been able to accomplish, it leaves the jar open so that you can continue to pull pickles out of it. I don't know where the jar scenario came from, but it leaves the jar open so it opens you up to possibilities. Then let's ask yourself, how can I do that thing that I haven't done, right? Like let's take the pull up. How can I do a pull up? Maybe you're 50 pounds overweight and maybe that's part of the issue is that's a lot of extra weight to pull up. Well, if I really wanna do a pull up, can I lose some weight to, have, to be easier to pull up while I'm focusing on my grip strength and my uh, shoulder stability and whatever else it takes. So maybe what you could do the next time you run into the I can't <clears throat> or what I, ha what I haven't done yet is make a list of what you can do. Combat that negative thought with what can you do though, right? Maybe, you're, um, maybe you can't hike Mickinick, but you have been really good about getting out for walks every day. And that is awesome because that's going to take you to the next step of doing something like Mickinick. For those of you that aren't local, Mickinick is one of our very cool hikes. It's pretty, pretty hilly. <clears throat> Um, maybe you go to the Mickinick parking lot and go up to the first chair. It's a half mile from the Mickinick parking lot to the first chair. That's it. That's totally fine. You can do the first chair. And then the next time you go a little farther, a little farther. I mean, it seems obvious, but when it comes to our brain and how our brain talks to us and talks us down so often, it's really, really important that you intentionally flip the script and give yourself something that you can do. And the thing is, when we say, let's take Mickinick again, um, I can't hike Mickinick or I haven't done that yet or I'm afraid, maybe it's fear, understandable. Um, have you even tried? Have you tried to go part way? Have you tried to go a little farther than part way? Have you tried to go to the second chair? Second chair is one and a half miles from the parking lot, just so you know. I want to give you guys those perspectives because that's a great goal for you to get to Mickinick. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. Um, so I just wanted to encourage you to catch the thought hold the thought captive, flip it, and look at what you can do. Because once you focus on what you can't do, there's just, it's almost like, like I said, you put the lid on the jar. If you change that perspective, and what is it that I need to be able to do? What do I need first to be able to do this pull-up or to hike to Mickinick or whatever it is? Um, and make sure that you discard the what I can't, because really, you can do anything. It just takes some baby steps, right? I think sometimes we take for granted the baby step factor that we think we should just be able to, because other people can, let's say other people can do Mickinick. We just think we should be able to get up in the morning and go do Mickinick. And we forget that there's steps. It's just how our human brain works. I don't mean to belittle you at all for that. It's just how we all do it. Um, so hold the thought captive. No, let's back up. Pick a really good goal. Pick a good goal that's going to push you a little bit. Figure out what does it take to get to that goal. That will help your motivation. And then um, anytime one of these, make a list of what you can do versus what you feel, you know, the conversation of what you can't do. Make a little list and take a look at that list and look at the I can't. Like, okay, I truly cannot go to McNick because I just haven't tried it yet. Maybe ask yourself that question. Is it just that I haven't tried it? Is it what, what is the thing that's um, making you think you can't do it? Is it just your mind or is it... Um, you know, is it a physical limitation or is it a matter of just working your way up and then writing the rewriting the script and saying, um, I'm not able to hike make a nick yet, but with my plan of whatever it is going to the, the first bench, going to the second bench every week or whatever it is, I will get there by this date. So that could be your big goal. Okay. Thanks you guys.